This next story is really sad to hear because it shows you not only the dangers of conspiracy theories and how it makes people lose touch with reality, what's empirical, what's verifiable, but on top of that, it speaks to the impact that this has on the loved ones of people who be consumed, who become consumed rather by conspiracy theories. And we're going to dive into the article, but first I just want to read you the headline because it says a lot. So this is from Vice News, and um, the title is, I'm a Parkland shooting survivor. QAnon convinced my dad it was all a hoax. I don't know how to help someone that far gone. Wow. That is a hell of a title. And it wasn't always this way for this individual. Their father was initially very supportive. So the shooter wore burgundy shirt, uh, a burgundy shirt. So... Um, they explain how their father would avoid wearing burgundy because he knew how triggering this was after the shooting. Uh, but all of a sudden, he joined QAnon, and this cult convinced him that his own son was lying to him. And it's not some, like, innocent, oh, well, you know, my son wasn't part of the plot. He wasn't part of the conspiracy theory. No, he literally thinks his own son was a crisis actor. This is deeply depressing, but nonetheless, let's get into this story here. So David Gilbert writes, Bill's final semester at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School in Parkland, Florida was already difficult enough. He was part of the final graduating class of survivors of the 2018 shooting, and they all had just marked the third anniversary of the day 17 people were killed, nine of whom were Bill's classmates. But Bill also had to deal with his father's daily accusations that the shooting was a hoax and that the shooter Bill and all his classmates were paid pawns in a grand conspiracy orchestrated by some shadowy force. Bill had worked hard to get over his survivor's guilt after the shooting, but for the past five months, his own father has been triggering it all over again. He'll say stuff like this straight to my face whenever he's drinking. You're a real piece of work to be able to sit here and act like nothing ever happened if it wasn't a hoax. Shame on you for being part of it and putting your family through it too, Bill said in an anonymous post on Reddit last week. Now, Bill isn't his real name. Bill is just a moniker that he's using to protect his own identity. But um, he did make a post in QAnon Casualties. This is a subreddit that is really fascinating to me. And Vice did verify that this was, in fact, a true story. This is a Parkland survivor. So the question is, like, what happened? How did his father go from being supportive to thinking that his own child, who survived a mass shooting, was a crisis actor. Well, he uh, started to get radicalized during the pandemic. Bill explains that he was very anti-mask against lockdowns. So he, you know, spoke with like-minded people online, social media, and that's how he was introduced to QAnon. He started to go further and further down the QAnon rabbit hole, and he began to question the legitimacy of the uh, shooting that his son was part of, after he saw one video in particular. The video in question, this. David, why are you supporting the red flag laws? If there had been, if Scott Peterson, the resource officer at Parkland had done his job, then Nicholas Cruz wouldn't have killed anybody in your high school or at least protected them. Why are you supporting red flag gun laws that attack our second amendment rights? And why are you using kids to get to, as a barrier? He has nothing to say because there really isn't anything to say, you guys. He has nothing to say because he's paid to do this. He has the walkaway march. Mm -hmm. He's got the um, he's got the women's march, and they're funding all of this. Every town gun USA, they're funding all this stuff. Okay, that was David Hogue right there. David, we saw him inside the Senate building. He had 30, 30 um, appointments where he ran around and got to talk to senators. I got to talk to none, none. He had media coverage all over the place. I had zero. Guess what? I'm a gun owner. I'm an American citizen. And I have nothing but this guy with his George Soros funding and his major liberal funding has got everything. I want you to think about that. That's where we are. And he's a coward. He can't say one word because he can't defend his stance. Because there is no defense for taking away guns. There is no defense for gun confiscation. Zero. And so there he goes. He just keeps walking with his, with his two ladies that probably work with him 
Maybe it's handlers. Maybe it's handlers, absolutely. They're telling mm -hmm. him, don't say anything. Marjorie Taylor Greene harassing another Parkland survivor is the reason why a different Parkland survivor's father began to think that his own son was a liar and a crisis actor. It's just deeply, deeply disturbing and, and sad, quite frankly. Now, in that video, Marjorie Green doesn't explicitly say that the Parkland shooting was a false flag. I'm sure that she thinks that to herself. But regardless, the things that she says, I mean, if you're already part of QAnon and she's a fellow QAnon member and you're already prone to conspiratorial thinking, the things that she says obviously are going to lead you to this false conclusion that it was all staged, right? So, uh, you know, she accused David Hogg in that video of uh, having a lobby, getting paid for his uh, advocacy, meaning he's an actor, right? This is an accusation lobbed against leftists all the time by right-wingers who just don't like the protests that they see. But I mean, if you think that somebody is getting paid and there's a political agenda and that this is all a ploy by David Hogg to take away people's guns, as Marjorie Greene suggested, then, you know, this other QAnon member who probably respected Marjorie Greene thought, oh, well, if this is just a ploy to take guns, then obviously it was a false flag. And since I am now concluding it was a false flag, my own son had to be in on it. I mean, the most charitable I could be in this situation is that this individual was duped into thinking it was a false flag and that his son wasn't in on it, but he literally thinks that his son was in on it. Like, if you're a parent, you 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 usually go out of your way to defend your children. There's cognitive dissonance in every single parent's mind at the thought that their kids ever do anything wrong. So, it's absurd to me that he was that far gone that he literally instinctively thought, no, my son's definitely a crisis actor. It's not that he was part of this false flag by accident and he wasn't in on it, but everyone else was. No, he literally thinks his son is a liar after he survived a mass shooting in high school. That is just so awful and unfathomably sad. Like, I can't imagine what Bill is going through. So, there's a little bit more details here. Ever since then, then being him watching that video, Bill's father has become convinced the shooting his son survived was a so-called false flag event and that the shooter was a radical commie actor. From there, it snowballed into what he is today, believing that if the government is able to overthrow an election, then everything else is probably a lie too, Bill added. Bill is 18, and now that he's graduated high school, he's looking to get out of the toxic situation he finds himself in. I do have options that can have me out before August, which as of now I'm planning to do, Bill said. I've been delaying it because I felt stuck trying to fix my dad. Bill says his relationship with his mother has also suffered. The relationship with my mom is dependent on whether my dad is there or not, because then it's pretty much all about conspiracy theories, Bill told Vice News. The relationship used to be fine, but is deteriorating quickly, especially after telling her that if she doesn't start putting her foot down, I'm leaving with no interest in seeing my dad again. But despite the threats to leave home, Bill's mother has not stood up to his dad. At this point, Bill has little hope in ever seeing his father return to the person he was before he became obsessed with QAnon conspiracy theories, and even if he did, too much has happened to ever repair their relationship. He'll never stop on his own because there are always new theories and goalposts being moved, Bill said. I don't know know how to help someone that far gone. My guess is restricted access to the internet and lots of therapy, but even if there was hope he'd eventually snap out of it, it wouldn't change my mind on never wanting to see him again, so it doesn't really matter anymore. I mean, I don't know what to say. The story is so incredibly tragic, and I feel so bad for Bill because, I mean, it, life is already hard enough when you're going through high school, you're 18, you're graduating, there's a lot that you have to deal with. You know, you're developing into an adult, and, you know, you're you're readying yourself to get out into the world. It's a scary place. And then a shooting happens. And then your own father becomes a conspiracy theorist and denies that you experienced what you did. It's just, it's so sad. And another element of the story that I didn't get to is that he doesn't feel like he's able to speak with his fellow Parkland classmates because the thought that their experience that they all collectively dealt with was a false flag to them is too traumatic. It would trigger their PTSD and he doesn't want to do that. So he holds it all in and doesn't tell anyone, which is why he went to the QAnon casualty subreddit because he doesn't have anyone to talk to. His mom won't do anything. He doesn't want to talk to his classmates because, you know, that's going to be triggering to them and their PTSD to hear that. And so he holds it all in and just is miserable. 
Wow. Wow. So, I mean, if anyone tells you that QAnon is not serious or isn't a threat, QAnon is a conspiracy theory that ruins lives. It tears families apart. And I've talked about it on this program, and I'm going to continue to talk about it because I want people to understand that if they're able to reach one of their loved ones before they get too deep into that rabbit hole, they've got to try. Do everything in your power to stop it. Because if you don't, it might be too late and they might become too far gone. Like his father does think that he's too far gone. And even though, you know, his son doesn't want anything to do with him, he believes the people online, these Q cultists more than his own child, that it's not only pathetic, but just it's depressing and sad. I feel so bad for Bill. 